So let's get started on today's class. Um, I have a couple of things to cover today. Um, I wanted to paint this, uh, paint over this. Um, but before I get started, today I'll be using Portrait Studio to help me tilt her head and uh, make a little bit uh, more of an interesting gesture. Portrait Studio is a software Abu and I developed um, uh, where you control a mannequin, you control the lighting, you control the camera, um, and that pretty much you have a studio at your fingertips. Um, so it's amazing reference generation software and it's on sale on my website at isterac.com on the store icon here on the store tab. Go over there and have a look. Um, and if you learned something today and you're interested in giving back to the community, you can always join as a watcher. Watcher is a $1 uh, pledge, just a $1 patron. Uh, that's $12 a year, and I've been teaching for a really, really long time. I will always teach for free. You don't have to be a patron to get free access to my channel. The classes that I host are not um, diluted in knowledge in any way. They are the same amount of content I give, um, you know, everywhere, even for the paid uh, stuff that I do with private students. The only difference is that it's one-on-one -on -one and it's only about them. So I don't dilute the free stuff that I give out because then the universe will get me and it's bad karma because I've been given this knowledge and I want to share it with you guys just for that. But it is times are tough and YouTube is destroying my channel slowly but surely and notifications aren't going out. Um, and it's really, really sad that my channel is being put in the back because, well, it's long videos and they're not really easily attached to ads in any way because it's so niche. Um, so that's never going to change. I'm never going to adjust the quality that I give out as well as the length and the, the class length, which is an hour to two hours sometimes. I'm never going to make little tiny make videos about um, about style and anime and dodge tool. Um, I'm always going to focus on the real stuff that makes illustrations amazing because that's my legacy and that's what I'm here to do. And if you want to support me for that, um, you can join as a single dollar, a dollar a month. Um, if you are used to, you know, using Patreon, if you, if you're, if you're comfortable using your credit card online, it's a small amount, it's untraceable, but with everyone on board, it's a lot. And I know you may say, oh, the next guy will do it, but that next guy is also saying the next guy will do it. So if you have benefited from my channel, I would really appreciate it if you guys go to Patreon and join as a dollar. Um, and if you want your stuff critiqued, go to isterbrack.com and click on the little Reddit icon here. Isterbrack, how do I get you to critique my stuff for free? Remember, you don't have to be a patron. This is open to everyone. So isterbrack.com, um, click on the little Reddit icon. I have a subreddit and, uh, go there, learn how to post, uh, look up a quick YouTube video on how to post on Reddit. It's just like posting on any other forum, but just in case you're confused or intimidated, um, it's not that hard to learn how to post on Reddit really. And um, add your stuff to the illustration, I mean, to the post, and you can post in, in, as a link or as a, as a preview image. And this is where I pick up all the stuff to critique in my videos. This is where I found the piece I'll be looking at today. Um, and that's it. I am hosting these classes as a stream, so I'd really appreciate if you guys turned your bell notification on and click on all, on notify all. Uh, that way you guys can join on the live streams, which means the world to me makes my little heart happy. <laughs> I'm not being like sarcastic right now. Like it's really nice when you guys come and join me for a live stream because it's real. It's live. It's it's happening. And it makes me feel like a, a happy little teacher. Um so if you guys can go there, that'd be really cool. Um all right, let's get started. Uh so <laughs> what uh what I'm seeing in front of me, again, it's those noob mistakes, which is washed out values, no real light source, excessive detail, oof, um, um, oh, like really no, no clean edges, no edges anywhere for any of the textures. Everything seems so ghostly. You probably, you know, you can paint a great face and you want it to apply an illustration to it. Um, and it's not so much that I'm going to tell you stop doing masterpieces and perfect your, it's stop doing masterpieces. That's always going to be my thing. Uh, focus on perfecting your, your, your form, your edges, your contrast control, all of that stuff. If you don't know what any of that means, you need to start binging on my videos because I cover all of that. If you don't know what the basic vocabulary is, um, the way to improve is to just at least get your vocabulary up, right? Get your awareness, uh, vo the, the geographical placement of all these words in your mind 
um, to the map that is skill and art, you know, so, you know, what is edging? What is garage work? What does that look like? How does my work not have that or have that? So start there. And then, you know, even as you listen to other critiques, you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. Because the, the worst part about listening to a lecture is not knowing what the hell is being referred to or what's spoken about. So when you become more, at least on the vocabulary level, aware of the, um, the fundamentals, you automatically will see them in your work. So just being verbally aware of the fundamentals. So imagine that. And then imagine being verbally aware on top of practicing them in your canvas. So understanding what a clean edge is and making a clean edge on a cube and making maybe a hundred cubes and a hundred clean edges all across the, the board and um, maybe trying to apply some good bounce light. And all of a sudden the words that are, the fundamentals that were just words are now real functional skills, uh, parts of your skill set, parts of your arsenal. Um, and uh, and and then eventually your art will reflect all of that. So this student somewhere down the line doesn't know a vocabulary word about one fundamental or another and therefore has nowhere to place it in their mind for how to use it because they don't have mileage with that word. They don't even have the word itself. And then moving into uh, practicing it. How can you practice something you don't know? Um, so at least watching videos helps you. At least knowing the terminology helps you. There's always ways to improve your work. It is not as a standstill as you imagine or as your anxiety convinces you or fools you into thinking. Uh, we all have anxiety. I truly believe every single one of us has anxiety now. Not a single person in this earth has no, has no anxiety. It's like a permanent thing you're all suffering from collectively. Um, anyway, so the issues that I want to fix, um, things that you could have done to make this piece better, things that are a reflection of your lack of vocabulary or just lack of awareness of the potential of these changes. Uh, first thing is the gesture of the head. The gesture of the head is like non-existent because right now, so let me open up Portrait Studio, right now, the head that you have here is really just, just this, like it's, it's just a flat head. It's just staring into space doing nothing. Okay, there's a little rotation because it's a three-quarter view and that's it, um, which is unfortunate uh, because you could be doing so much more. So for a character who's wearing a neck piece like this, this long turtleneck ruffled thing, when you think of fashion, uh, and that's why I'm saying you guys got to be aware of everything, cinema, fashion, photography, all of that. I even read comic books, do every, do it all because the more you know, the more you'll be able to pull bring back to your illustrations. Uh, like watch interpretive dance, watch uh, watch sports, not too much sports though, don't be like that, but um, watch you know enough that you understand the different aspects of design. You know, there's design even in uh, looking at cars and different types of cars. But anyway, fashion here, the rules of fashion dictate that if you're going to show off a neck piece like this, a big dressy, Bit. You're not going to obstruct the hair. You're not going to let the hair obstruct it. The silhouette right now is all about the ruffles and the neck. So what you want to do is get the head out of the way. You want to exaggerate the length of the neck. So ex extend it, really pull it, but make the neck feel a lot longer than it is. And, and make it all about the way that the face is. It's like she's showing off her neck. It's like, look at my neck piece. You know, look at this piece. That I think she's very proud. She seems like she's a psychic alien courtesan type member of the alien court, queen, princess, whatever. She's royalty. She's important. Um, so when you think of that, and I, and I think of a character that's like that, I've already set up the Portrait Studio file, but I'm going to extend the neck, actually. I'm going to lower the camera down, and I'm going to tilt the head away like you saw earlier. Just like that. I'm gonna tilt her head this way. And just look at that. It looks like she's saying, look at my neck. Look at my neck. And I've extended the size of her neck as well. So like you can you can lengthen the neck quite a bit in your model and you'd get away with a lot, believe it or not. Because there's different lengths to necks across, you know, different types of bodies. But for a character design and a drawing, we're halfway to cartoon anyway. By the way, even if you use a reference, your, your version is cartoony. There's no escape from the cartoony look, even if you render good edges, fundamentals or not. Um, there's a certain cartooniness. There's a certain drop 
in the delivery of realism when it's no longer photorealism. Um, things just have a cartoony look to them. Uh, so you, be it's good sometimes, uh, most of the time done right, because you can um, break a lot of rules in a really nice classy way. And so that's what I want to do right here for her. That's it. That's it. Just this little neck tilt is all we need for this character. You can take the screenshot right here. I'm just going to use green shot. Actually, let me turn the... Um, where is it? Where is it? Alright. And um, I'm just going to take a screenshot of the angle that I want for the ref. It's a little bit more than that. And I'll keep that open here. All right, so how do we apply? And look at this, just so pretty. It's just so freaking pretty. It's such a nice angle. And we can make her look down at the character, at the viewer, and kind of close her eyes a little bit. It'll be fun. So yes, this is an overhaul change. I'm kind of going to go ham, just apply all my skill to it, um, and see what we could pull off. So first and foremost, I'm going to have to disconnect the background from the character. So a lot of students ask me questions like, how do you know that in fashion um, you're supposed to free the neck up and in this kind of design? Uh, how do you know that the silhouette? Well, it's just pretty much self-explanatory. If you spent hours designing a ruffly hair or neck thing, sorry, neck piece here, you wouldn't want the hair to be in there. It's just, it's just common sense. But if it's not, if it doesn't come easily to you, it's not like common sense is a is free real estate like it, it's 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 not always available to people especially people struggling with fundamentals they don't always have access to the common sense of design um i'm not sure what kind of uh, you know what because i'm going to be selecting that i want to add that head structure thing that you're adding here um but yeah because it's not always accessible best thing you could do again it's like like watch RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> like I know that there must have been a neck piece this gaudy and gigantic in that show somewhere. And I'm sure somebody said, yeah, you could have put your hair up in a piece. Like that's how you learn. That's how I learned it. That's how I've learned these things. Literally, I could hear RuPaul in my mind saying like, just why would you keep your hair down in a neck piece like this? Elongate the neck, you know, make it look a lot nicer. Keep the shoulders really bare. So it's all about the neck or something like that. Like you pick that shit up when you watch like America's Next Top Model or something. It's TV, it's media, it's seeing all kinds, expose yourself to everything. Don't be too exclusive. Um, also don't overstimulate yourself, but at the same time, just be aware, be analytical, be big, big brain like me. Um, and then I'm going to just uh, do that. Mm. How am I going to do it? Be a big brain, like a different filter, blur, collision blow, just to clean things up. And then I'm going to just clean up the background so I can just mess around. So this is going to be a gigantic liquify adventure. Um, so if things don't look great by the before and after, I'm sorry. I'm trying my best. Right. Now, obviously, if you know me, you know I'm going to apply a silhouette somewhere in there just because they're the best thing that ever happened. Um, so I, I love silhouettes. I'm not going to apply a full one. I'm going to try to let her feel that, stay in that divine light kind of seer character. Um, but I will try to, uh, to do a little bit of both. So, okie dokie. Um, so this is going to be a huge change and I'm trying to figure out in my brain parts where I am starting, either with transform or liquify. I will do transform first. All right, so. This is the whole dang thing. All righty, so I am gonna go crazy. So hang on to your to your little thing that, that grannies hold on to in the car. <laughs> What's that little thing, the, the handle? 
hang on to your handles because this is going to be one crazy freaking liquify adventure. All right. Her expression also looks like it's not great. It's not because we don't know what she's doing. She could be in a, in a you know, seance, kind of in a trance thing. Uh, who knows? Uh, but it's hard to put her finger on. It's hard to understand what it is that she's going through right now. You kind of just put something like a pretty eye and uh, and went with it. Um, be a little bit more like direct, a little bit more concrete with the expressions. Is she, uh, you know, a put upon seer? Is she someone who doesn't want to be looking up stuff for this evil king? Is she um, a prophet of sorts for her people who sees big events before they happen what is who is she what kind of character is she what's she going through and be more just concrete about it more direct about it all right so what i'm seeing i see lines in my brain all the time because i've been doing this for so long but you 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 see this line right you see this line right here you see this line right here you see this line that's all i'm doing with liquify right now is i'm balancing the two eyes together two nostrils and two mouth edges together um in this way here i should have taken out the pupil in the iris and this is this is a really 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 tilted perspective so you can't be scared one eye is literally higher and above the other so go for it the more you risk the more the reward um all right and then the corners again if it looks weird who cares just go for it I'm gonna have to close her mouth because she's kind of just like, <laughs> and I don't want her to be like <laughs> right now. I just want like a kind of like a solemn look, but also a show offish look. Like, look at my neck brace thing. Look at it, and that's what she's all about right now. <laughs> All right, and then, uh, so when you have a tilt that happens this in this intensity, there's no more neck jawline. Um, that, that thing disappears. So don't be in a rush to show it or anything like that. By the way, a quick little message. I've discovered that some popular artists watch my videos, but don't say they do. Hey, if you're like one of those popular artists that watches my videos, um, what's your problem? Are you like scared of telling people that a girl is teaching you? Like, are you threatened by me or something? What's your problem? Why don't you tell people that you're learning from my channel? Anyway, um, so right here, we see how the head is, that the far side of the three quarter view is behind the head. Remember, the far side is behind it. There's stuff, the head is behind the head. You understand? And I'm talking about people who've been watching my videos for years and years. And uh, I know who they are, and it's just it just pisses me off that they hide the fact that they watch, and they think I wouldn't know, and I wouldn't find out. Um, but it's pretty obvious. And I've been told. So, really, really big overall change. Um, I'm not popular artist. <laughs> Is it normal to see dirty blobs with parts of strokes that are not parallel and so intersected after some radial shading? Um, I don't know. I don't think you should be seeing any dirty blobs. If you shrunk your brush too early, probably, um, because then you just have a blob there that's existing and it's hard to get rid of because it's so low opacity and you'd have to restart all over again. If you fail a radial shading um, sequence, you're going to have to redo it. It's You're fighting against gradient op low opacity. It's it's an impossible fight. You're going to have that banding there till, till, till publishing time. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you're, that you're, uh, keeping it clean, the process, the entire movement down. 
So this is what I mean by the head is behind the head. Um, just watch. 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 Bam, bam, bam. Look at that. That's how you do a three-quarter view. By grabbing the head on the far side and then putting it behind the head. And that's pretty much how it's done. And I'm going to just drop that eye a little bit lower because I know the ear, the, 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 sorry, the nose is in front of the far part of the head. And so I'm going to lock this, let some light hit the top and maybe pull out the nose even further. Um, hopefully. And I'm just going to do for the nose, just, just for itself, not for the, so if you don't disconnect the nose in the three quarter view on a separate layer or something like this, um, you, uh, you run the risk of trying to accommodate for the far eye without doing enough for the nose. The nose is this, this gigantic projected snout thing that we have. Um, and you've got to show that it's in the way when perspective. The nose is like your best friend when it comes to perspective because it helps you create perspective. It helps you build the perspective. Um, so you want to show. So just take a look at like before we made the nose a little bit more projected. Like it's great. It's wonderful for helping you project um, perspective a little bit better. And now we can safely, when we separated two layers, we could safely tuck this eye nicely behind and actually have really nice um, the quarter view uh, control, especially through quarter view and perspective. And the key and the reason why not the nose is your friend is because the nostrils being visible is how you create low angle perspective in three quarter view. I'm going to pull out the rest of the face a little bit more and I'm going to try to fix that um, thing she's doing with her mouth. So the far teeth, the lower teeth are no longer visible. Um, so I'm going to just try to get rid of that because the angle is so low. And I really like how she looks so elegant with her mouth closed. Um, so I want to kind of meet you halfway. Alrighty. And then we're back to this. Now when we're on this stage, we can have a lot of fun. Actually, let me just start it with the transform tool. First, and then go into liquify. And I'm going to like zoom all the way out and just elongate. Because we're we're choosing, we we you've chosen the you, you, the artist here, have chosen the costume. And then what I'm showing you is what when you choose a costume like this, this is what you're responsible for. So if you're gonna choose a costume that's all about the neckline, you gotta show off that neckline. When you see like um uh, commercials or in you're in the mall you're passing by a jewelry store and, and 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 the model is showing off the necklace what's she doing with her neck like look out for it what is it that she's doing um she's tilting her head back she's showing her neckline her collarbone all of that stuff um so that's what you need to be doing and i'm gonna just try to mess with her shoulder line a little bit as well and I like how that looks. So just a tiny little gesture change did so much for your character. And then I'm going to just raise that background light a little bit for that slight silhouette. Don't worry, I'm not going to throw it into a big old silhouette like I've been. Um, I'm going to show a little bit more perspective on the ruffles. And... Um, and then just work on the face a little bit using the model um, so that everything's blended together. So the eyes, the eyes are gonna be tricky. Right. Um, so I just wanna give the nose a little bit more length. Um, drop the eye a little bit more. Yeah, those elegant 
elegant rich cheekbones <laughs> you know what i mean by rich cheekbones you know they got those rich cheekbones and you know you, you would choose a model that has that if you were if you were choosing you know models and you were a fashion designer all about that whole thing um of course the far side of her head is not visible at the moment so we need to clean that up and then um, just think about this line. As long as I'm seeing this line that I see in the portrait studio model, um, then, I, then I've captured that perspective successfully. And if you're still having issues understanding perspective, by all means, draw lines all over your model until you understand it. No one said you can't break down and dissect your model. And anybody says, Anybody who says, oh, you're tracing, you're being dishonest, just because you're tracing over your model with some lines is a dumbass. Don't listen to them. Stay away from them. Don't touch them with a 10-foot pole. They're probably anti-vaxxers, too. Um, and I'm going to just start painting. So now that all that perspective is in place, I'm going to start painting. I might do a little bit more with the uh, ruffles of the, of the, um, of the neckline. But, you know, if you were going to have tiny little eyebrows, just have no eyebrows. How about that? How about that? <laughs> because if you're not even going to have eyebrows, have the no eyebrow look. Because it makes her a little bit almost villainous um, to have no eyebrows. And just have a slight brow muscle indication there. And let me show you what happens when we take her eyes and just move them over to look down sort of at the viewer or look slightly away at the viewer. So she's not gonna make eye contact with you. She's too good. She's too good. You're not good enough for her to make eye contact. But, um, sorry, my voice is still cracking. Uh, but uh, but she'll look a little bit to the side. She'll look in your general direction, but not make eye contact. You don't deserve that. And then, so let me get rid of her eyes. Turn those back. Oops. You see what that does? Because now take a fucking look. Take a take a look. Her head is looking this way, but her eyes are looking this way. And we're getting this beautiful tension in between the two. But her head is also tilted up that way. And we've got her neck so much more interesting. And all you have to do is just go to your model and tilt it upward a little bit. It's just a slight little change and everything. Everything is so much more uh, high quality in the delivery. Anyway, I'm going to stop being a little <laughs> so intense. I'm sorry. I love my job. Um, but uh, let me clean up the eyes a little bit. And maybe just keep her eyes slightly open because she may she may be looking at the person in front of her and she may be analyzing them. She may be psychic. She may be a Galadriel type character that kind of reads people's minds or can talk to them um, without without speaking. And that's you know some telepathic thing. Um, and that just makes her that much more intriguing a character, that much more interesting. So you've got a couple choices. Obviously, I'm always going to advocate for the silhouette, but, you know, do your thing, whatever. <laughs> but uh, please try the silhouette. At least think about it. Um, uh, but I will do a little bit of both just so you can see the benefit of both. So I need to show off the far side of the head, and I need to show off the rest of the neck just over here. Because the neck jawline thing is no longer visible, and we tilted the head like that. So there's different things you can do right now with the lighting. You could darken her, which is hella fucking cool. All the time, I'll always say darken the character, brighten the eyes. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, but we could do something in between. Uh, we could do a little bit of both. So I'm going to lock the layer and um, do that whole darken color balance thing. So I'm going to do both. Alrighty. So uh, duplicate. Find a common darkening, darkening value. And um, and just darken with that. Just to, oh shit, I'm locked. All right, locked. Darken with that. And I'm not sure if I need to color code anymore. 
uh, but definitely uh, now we erase because we have some of the silhouette intact. So we can erase with radial shading, y'all. And we could erase so that we see the silhouette revealed a little bit by that divine light above her. And we're erasing along the, the structure of the geometries of the features here. Just take a look at that. God damn. And then we're um, radially. God damn. <laughs> I love it. I love this. Anyway, let's keep going. I'll stop freaking out. It's too bad. Um, and then I'm going to just section off the knobs. <laughs> keep going. I'm on another level here today. All right. Um, yeah, she does seem cold hearted. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I, I make sure the nose isn't part of that just because I know the nose is doing something else. Um, and then the waterline may be re re uh, relieved of that shadow. Uh, just the eyelids a little. Um, but for the most part, I want her eyes to be shadowed and mysterious and kind of threatening. Just like that. And you, you can keep some of that excessive contour look to the, to the piece. And then up here you have the option of um, doing this, which is really cool because it's kind of like mid-tone, um, uh, a highlighter moving upward, not fully drowned in light. You can if you wanted to, uh, but still having a kind of a also mid-tone-y looking uh, silhouette. And so... You could, I mean, you could do this where you completely drown the top, um, but the light, this is if, if you had to make her as divine as before. Obviously the, pers the personality's changed a little bit, but this is just for those, those, those dirty silhouette haters. It's track, not every one of your critiques has to be a silhouette. I mean, nobody's saying that to me. It's literally me talking about myself. No one's ever said, ever, it's Rex, I'm doing silhouettes. It's just me talking to shit. Um, but, whatever. And, um, okay, and now, how oh, things are getting interesting. Because you can start messing around with the transparency of the ruffles here. Bro. But shit's about to go down right now. All right, where are you? Highlights. Okay, what's happening? Um, okay. Oh, okay. So. No? You still don't want to work? What's going on here? All right. Um, let me just, because I think I'm about to have a crash. I'm having too much fun. My energy is literally, my electrical aura is, is, is destroying my computer's graphics card right now. Um, all right, so, I, I really want to pull it off. And... No? You, you want to stop working again? No? Yeah. All right. So this is the, the silhouette of the light shooting through the transparency of the fabric. Poetry. That's poetry right there. And I want to duplicate this layer and bring it back so that we have just enough of it. And then in this case, we could darken the back and then oh so slightly if need be. Um, but I'm still not sure about that because I'm not sacrificing my silhouette that easily. But anyway, I'm gonna select that. Go to before I did that. And then just delete along the edge because that, that dodge tool is a little bit strong. So you just want to show, you know, like the shadow of the neck on the fabric and the little spot where you get that breach where the light just goes through the very surface. Just, just you know, where the, the fabric is floating over the skin.
and you could push that um, that light to be a little stronger or you could just leave it just on the feathered ends of the of the neck piece that doesn't have to be a lot to make an impact or, or, or do the job the job can be done with a little bit I don't like these little you know these little line looking things because I'm very cautious with lines but I'll leave a little bit of them in place <clears throat> All right, and then um, and then I want to uh, actually make her look low. I want to really make that 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 opposing lines thing. Um, so I'm going to close the eyes a bit more, like she is looking down, very very pompously. And then when the eye is looking in one direction, the, the eyelids pinch because the, the thickness of the pupil in the iris pinch or enlarge the, the eyelids. And then, oops. And that really makes her look a lot more menacing and a lot more powerful. You could make her look down at you as well, um, which is also very interesting, but I like the, the tilted away look as well. So now we get to do the fun stuff. Now we get to do stuff that's a little bit more um, impact, has a higher impact, less caution, more impact. We could darken the whole thing which I am a big fan of because it's it's going to help make her feel a little bit more strong um, and a little bit more mysterious and the character has changed because for the sake of the critique I've had to um uh uh oh, I do not I want to saturation uh, I had to dis decide on the story you know what is the story I had to make decisions because the critique wouldn't be able to happen if I didn't make a decision on the narrative you need a narrative to make structural design choices um, so uh, make sure you know that a little bit of subsurface along her ear um, and I'm going to drop the levels as well and there's different things you could do you could you could choose not to have um, so I need this saturation here sorry give me a minute I need this saturation but I need the skin to stay subtle so, so I delete at the skin. But I have saturation in her in her uh, clothing, but not otherwise. Then uh, this is the washed out version. If you have to have it, like I covered in that one class, you could just make her a divine character and just do something within this realm, and you know the painting is done. Um, but uh, obviously we don't we, we're dark in this. It's it's the rock. So we're talking about like dark themes and and really dramatic lighting. So I'm not really for that, you know, whole divine thing. Uh, but if you know, sometimes you're hired to do something like that, so go ahead. But you know me, when I'm allowed to write a story, I'm gonna make it dark. Um and I'm just gonna exaggerate the slenderness here. And one thing about the the, the fluffiness or the feathering of this of this neckline is that it will overlap the chin. Um, you will have parts of it that are in front of the chin because the, 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 you know, the whole thing tilted with the, with the neck, with the head. So you'll have something like this, um, where you'll have a little bit, a little bit more stuff in the way compared to before. Um, and then for the sake of the design, you could do something along these lines. Uh, where you darken the whole canvas at the top and then delete only a little bit of the uh, little bit with the eyes that way you have that or voting of the character um, you can G G G no F no oh my god all right and I'm just moving it up this way 
and then we're gonna delete only where we really need. I like the way it looks before, but just so we could explore our options. And uh, there goes the pen pusher again. Um, I think it's because I have a Windows Picture Viewer open. So you could do that. You could do that kind of cinematic darkening at the back and then really push that, that silhouette light in, in behind her. Um, you could get rid of this and still keep a lot of that kind of light. You could do the opposite. You could make it um, real clear. Is it going to inverse the layer? Invert? Yeah. Um, just to spare me some annoyingness. Merge layers and then um, tighten. You could do something like that. You have a drowning light coming from above. Um, again, it's me we're talking about, so I don't want to keep it dark. Um, so I'm deleting at the eyes, and I want to keep some of that structure that I discovered with the head, you know, just from coming from above. And then because the light is right behind, just like last class, there's a little bit of a light behind her. Just behind, just wherever that light is reaching. So let's do a quick little discussion on um, exaggerating. So when we're talking about this cartoon realism situation, nothing we paint is actually going to be realistic. Um, so you could, once you have the perspective in order, you could exaggerate things even further. See how I'm exaggerating things. Um, and then I'll just kind of make her shoulders a little asymmetrical, like she's kind of standing with her hips to the side all confidently. So it makes her a little bit more smug. Um, you could you could do the opposite. You could make one shoulder, the other shoulder high, and this shoulder low, which makes her look also a little bit more elegantly smug, like me. <laughs> um, and then you could tilt the whole thing over like that, um, and that'll also help you. But but look at the difference exaggeration does. You see, that's that quality and like league splashes and stuff like that um, that you think about and you're and you're like, you know, what is it that makes it so fun? They're exaggerating a lot. They exaggerate the line of action. They exaggerate the gesture line. They exaggerate the waistline. They exaggerate um, the 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 ever everything. The entire gesture is exaggerated. Because it's more fun, it's more gamey, it's more fun. Um, and then uh, and that's it. Um, so I, I, I want levels to be just just a bit more, just a bit more dramatic, just a bit more gamey. And then not so much those. And I feel like there should be some like extreme color saturation, but I'm not sure where, I, I mean, I know where I would have it, but I'm not sure how I'm applying it. Um, so maybe wherever the light is touching, we could introduce some, and then we could definitely, most surely, absolutely make her eyes a little bit more uh, saturated. And, um, maybe bring in some pinks for her cheekbones. And then, um, let me turn this one off. Bring in a little bit, make her chin a little bit stronger. Like, it's just that type of chin, you know? It's just catching some light. And a little bit more light there. And then for the mouth, I feel like you could you could benefit um some blue lipstick. Nothing like this organic. Just just go for some like blue lipstick. It's, it's, you can't go wrong with a villain with blue lipstick. And now that she's in the light, you could really um mess around with that. Yeah? You want to do this? All right. With the gems and those extra eyes she's got, you know. It's like jewelry, but not. 
um, and that's the shadow layer on top, which I want to erase wherever there is this, but because it's it's kind of killing the silhouette a little bit. There, how about I just, oops, I just um, go here so I can grab star mama and then just delete where there was no face. And the background, you could saturate it just a little. Oh, I accidentally saturated the character, but that I like it. Um, do I? Oops. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I do. I do. Um, but yeah, the background could be a bit more saturated. Sorry. And that will also help. Do you ever feel like that? Do you see how much saturation we have now without depending too much on the character being saturated? Um, and then now that I see it, um, a nice shadow, nice long shadow off her neck. I'm climbing upward this way could do a lot to make her look a bit more menacing. Just the light above her cast the shadow downward. Um, this blue light, this white light isn't great, and I'm going to desaturate the background a touch. All right, but it's me, so so just, just consider this option as well. It's, it's great. I love it. It's so cool because it makes her look so evil, um, but you don't have to because, you know, it's, it's, I'm trying to stay true to what the, the original artist painted. But let's just let me show you how awesome it'll be with the rim light maxed out um, and uh, those little key moments here maxed out like that. It's just hella cool, hella fun because it, it brings the attention back to her little ruffles once again. You have a lot of options. You have a lot of options. You got options. All right. And again, if you really have to apply the divinity aspect there, you could um, march down. And let me just fix whatever the heck that is. Any questions before I show you the before? Okay. So yeah, a lot of stuff is possible when you just when you just do a little bit of perspective work, just a little bit of stuff in in the direction of planning. Um, and Portrait Studio is great for that because you can see your painting right in front of you before you commit to anything, and it's um it's just a great tool. You can make her nostrils like like saturate. Like what's with that? Like <laughs> a lot of people are saturating nostrils nowadays. Let's do it too. Um, right there. See that? that looks great. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, but you know, to each of his, his own, to each to his to each to, to each his or her own. Um, and then that pink I mentioned earlier, it has to be like a really, um, you know, it's it's one of those pinks that is a little bit more purple. It's not really pink. It's got to be neighboring, and I would just put speckles of it. Here. Um. I'm not happy with the silhouette, so let me do one more thing in the direction of that. Just because that bloom and all that so important. And um and then now that I did that I may need to re encourage the rim light out. Shouldn't be too much because it's just the fabric. It's just the surface of the fabric. Mm. Right here. And then you have like different colors you can mess with. Um, so she's exhaling blue CO2. <laughs> now she looks like a drug lord. Uh, would it be a bad idea to detail the forehead carvings in a painting like this? Um, no, it's not a bad idea. 
Um, it just depends on what you remember. It's about the neckline and all of that. If it was about the character's forehead, um, the angle should have been something that suggested it. So if it's about a character's forehead, the kind of frame I would have chosen is like one of those like ghost in the shell manga type of, um, you know, angles, you know, when the character is like this and you got the eyes all serious and the nose extended out this way and then you've got hella cheekbones and then the eyes are right there for the viewing and then you've got you know the shoulders and it's like an extreme angle and um you know you're you're you framed it in a way where the jewelry is at the forefront you understand uh this is why again i'm saying be get be aware of how art is used in other areas even a jewelry store will help you with your illustrations um, so if this was about her jewels on the top of her head, this should have been the kind of angle you chose. Um, and it could have, it didn't have to be an extreme angle. It could have been, you know, something like that and the shoulders this way and the character, um, kind of standing a little bit, um, um, you know, a little bit off or a little bit leaning like that. And sorry about the weird ass back and I forgot to, you know, so that's, that's something you could do. And then you exaggerate that perspective even more just like that it's not about you know that's not what it was about so it was about that neckline and uh, you could mess around a lot with it um i am not a big fan of the rim light uh, but you know whatever let's just call it a day i'm not a big fan of the rim light <laughs> i want you guys to know that going out <laughs> um i'm not a big fan of it um any questions? Any other questions? You're welcome, Hardly. Any other questions? I'm just I'm just buying time just so I can keep having fun with this. Um, and I like the headpiece. Uh, I think it added a lot of fun. Sorry if this is out of topic, but as a person who's just starting, which uh, of the fundamentals is more important? You put more time and effort on for illustrations. Your form study is absolutely 100% more important because it teaches you how to see shapes in your references and how to build shapes without reference. Shapes are everywhere. Shapes are in everything. So do form studies. Do a lot of them. Do them until you see them everywhere at everything you look at. Um, giving the fridge vibes. Shapes are life. Would it be a bad idea? Um, some of my very literally like dead bodies in the water. Uh, God, if Cinderella's stepmother cosplayed as the White Witch. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so just, I just saw something pop out that I want to try, which is finding one of the lighter values, putting it on uh, lighten, and just lowering the opacity. Yas! <laughs> this is what I wanted. Um, this is just, it's not so much to cancel out the silhouette, it's just to bring in that neutralizing effect um, to the shadows. You see like when you put it on mid-tones and you raise it, the shadows disappear, but the character stays. This is on lighten, and the more I darken it, the more shadows get to pass through. Um, just like that. Uh, so kinda wanna throw that in there. Um, it's just a little wash. It's just a small little wash to help. Make her look a little bit more alien. You see the before, after. Um, but anywho, let's look at the before. This is just trying to change, or I know, <laughs> I know, I did a lot. Um, but before she wasn't really doing much. Um, you had that pretty design. Story wasn't very clear, and um. And uh, it was it was about the portrait, so I'll give you that. So you know, if, if you really had to have a character a thumbnail for a game while playing, you have to see the character's face. I get that part, but as an illustration, you weren't doing everything you could do for the sake of gesture, perspective, character design. There's no impact. It's boring. It's scroll and keep scrolling. No one's gonna stop and look at what you're delivering because you're not taking time to frame anything in particular and after obviously the story has changed but it but it seems to have that impact that that creative impact um 
which is which is a very big change. Uh, but uh, but it's for the sake of teaching you guys how to prioritize uh, what you're designing as just outside of art. What is it that you're delivering? What is it that you're portraying? What character? Obviously, she looks more e evil. I know. Um, but uh, but for the sake of that uh, uh, Cinderella evil mom neckline thing that someone mentioned, um, it's it's just how you deliver it. It's how you show it off. And really, there's no character framed in a movie that looks like this without looking evil. Um, so, uh, so yeah, big changes. You saw the process for the whole thing. Huge before and after, but at the end of the day, um, uh, uh, you know, if you, had to, if you had to keep her innocent look, um, you could. You could keep her innocent look in a lot of ways. You could keep her eyes open and make them more blind. And, of course, you could do this, uh, which is... Uh, just make the eyebrows just pushing up like that the way you did in yours um, and that way she is um, she has that innocence but also her eyes are wide open while she's having her little psychic attack um, so this is a different way but the point is is that the neckline still reads right the neckline still reads for that 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 fashion fundamental so if you want to open the eyes to be a little bit bigger and still keep kind of kind of the same personality as the character um kind of the same thing you might have to lighten things up a little bit more drastically just because is it working just because um you need to show off that kind of that innocence or divine look but the light was behind the character um the light was on the character as well um and uh and then you just had that light from above which i tried to keep for you i like the evil one because she's just so much more cool um and she's so much more menacing and she looks like a morgana skin or something like that which i really really like and if it was up to me i would darken a lot more i would darken um the neckline a lot more. So burn through burn the shadows. It's just it just looks so much more cool in my opinion. Um because the silhouette gets to do a lot. And it's not to change the color, because it could just bring the color back easily. Um, it's to, it's to create that impact for the silhouette, to create that really, really strong uh, presence, that female presence. Any questions at all? Yeah, and if they don't want her to look as evil, just, just change the facial expression. You make her look that, do that eyebrow thing, that innocent eyebrow thing. Um, what topic? Um, but when can we tackle more brushwork like art? Um, should we master light and shadow and fundamentals until we start texturing? I think so. That's a pretty good idea. Um, doing uh, textures before you understand where to put a core shadow. What do you think the mistake there is? Um, so imagine what so you guys can answer. What's the problem with doing textures before you do understand where a core shadow goes? Why is that problematic? Can anyone answer? And just uh, boosting this uh, contrast here. I mean, obviously, she needs she needs one of those. Cause why not? Um, and it'd be cool if it was like a different kind of ear. Pretty sure I did a tea hour very similar to this one already. <laughs> Um, I think some of that is some surface for the ear, and then just combining those two later as well. Texture doesn't determine form, texture goes over the form. Exactly, it's colorist, JK. Uh, it's because the shapes uh, won't be defined. Texture can obscure the form. Really beautiful answer, yes. Texture can obscure the form because it sits over top, whereas everything, the more you raise the texture slider, 
Um, if there was like a texture slider from smooth to super texture, the core sh shadow stays in its spot. So it's good to know where the core shadow is before you start raising the slider in your mind to have more texture in your work. Um, all your shadows have the same value. Um, in this piece, all the shadows, yeah, I did that deliberately just to create that washed out look. You don't have to do it, but I did it deliberately. Um, because we will confuse textures with form. Yes, exactly. You'll make assumptions about the, the form, but you won't know that you're hiding form. You're hiding an, an, a chance to reveal a core shadow where a texture would have sufficed and then you never corrected it. So remember, core shadows happen before textures. If you're not good with your core shadows, you're not, you don't have a good command over the shapes, which is why I said form studies are the best to do first, um, then you'll have a lot of issues moving forward with everything if you don't know where your core shadows are. Learn your shapes, learn your core shadows, everything else becomes easier to access in your mind. Alrighty, so huge class, big overhaul change, um, but it was a lot of fun. And um, uh, exit announcements. So if you learned something today and you want to give back to the community, you can always join as a dollar patron. Classes just like this, I plan to just keep doing them forever. So if you had fun, if you enjoyed today's class and something, please consider joining as a watcher. It's just a dollar. Um, and if you want your work submitted for critique hour, um, go here and, and uh, go to Sirac.com, click on the Reddit icon and go to the subreddit and submit your work. And then, uh, you know, that's where everything happens. You can submit your 14 day challenges. You can get critiqued. You can critique others. And if once I start hosting challenges again, um, uh, we can, you know, uh, post all, you can post all of your stuff here uh, for the challenge for the community challenges, which are like big assignments that I hand out for the, for the community. They're always fun and stuff like that. Um, and that's it. Thank you everyone for joining. I'll see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. I'm sorry about the recent cancellations. I had laryngitis and I, I had I had no voice. Um, it was terrible. I was trying to do classes, but it was not easy. Um, but I'll let you guys go. Thank you everyone for coming and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.